Greetings, YouTubians, and welcome back to Wayne Sharp World, where today we're taking a look at a very, very interesting little fifth pocket knife. The design is not new, but uh, the size this actual model is. This is the Boker Stubby Quaken. Now, before I go any further into this review, I'd like to thank you guys for tuning in today. If you like what you see, please do me a huge favor. Hit that subscribe button and follow along. I'm going to continue to bring you guys the content. Now, let's take a look at some overall specs on this knife right here. We have an overall length of 5.3 inches with a blade length coming in at 2 inches with a cutting edge of actually probably close to 2.2 inches. You have that flat, flat spine and so much belly um, adds up to a little over 2 inches. That blade width is 0.75 inches with a blade thickness coming in at 0.12 inches. Blade material on this guy, S35VN. I am never disappointed to see that blade steel marking. We have a uh, Quaken style blade, I guess. You know, the Quaken blade in general is a, is a very unique one. I've heard some people call it a trailing point, but I always thought the trailing point would kind of go a little beyond the... Uh, the back spine of the knife so let me know guys is the quaken blade its own shape or is it a trailing point i'm interested to hear your opinion on that um we have a flat grind with a handle length coming in at 3.25 inches and the handle thickness coming in at 0.55 definitely living up to that uh that's that stubby nickname uh handle width is 0.87 inches with handle material of titanium for the bolster carbon fiber for the kind of scales and the liners here are stainless steel so uh a, a, a decent little combination to kind of keep costs down a little but also uh kind of fancy it up with the titanium uh we have a locking mechanism of a liner lock with the right hand only tip up carry weight coming in at 2.49 ounces and a price of $99.99 now, as you know, this uh, the the Quaken the 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 Boker Quaken design is a uh, from Lucas Burnley. This here is actually a Blade HQ exclusive, so you can't get this anywhere else other than Blade HQ. They do have a good amount and a good variety of them left in stock, and they vary too. There's not just carbon fiber and titanium. They have some micarta ones. They have a really cool uh, green micarta with a copper bolster available. That's also ninety nine ninety nine. And uh, they also have it in all micarta and an all titanium version that I believe is $89.99. So some different pricing options and different flavors for you there. Now let's take a look at some size comparisons because this is a very small knife that uh, has some pretty good uses to it. Uh, before I plot any knives, let's compare it to this guy right here, the Leatherman Squirt. And as you can see, uh, probably better to compare these two closed. As you can see, not much bigger than a Leatherman Squirt. I mean, maybe I would say that difference is about an inch. Well, here, duh, I have a, uh, a board right here. Let's, let's let the board tell us. So you put these up. Yeah, little, right up, right up, right around an inch, I would say. Very close to an inch. Um, but... And as far as thickness, it's also very comparable. I think that's a pretty good indicator there, thickness of this guy, and uh, just overall size with the Leatherman Squirt. Now let's take a look at it with some other knives because we have a couple, a couple pretty good comparisons here when it comes to blades. And uh, one a little better than the other, but nonetheless, the CJRB Mylea. And my favorite comparison of any knife that I currently have the Kaiser Lieb, and the Lieb is very comparable, it, more so in ergos. This is a, the Lieb is a slightly bigger knife than, than the Mylea and the the Stubby Quaken, but when it comes to ergos and feel in hand, that is the closest example I have right there is that Lieb. So as you can see, it is a small knife and uh, just about every way imaginable, but there are some nice benefits to this guy. Um, immediately right off the bat for me this is a fifth pocket knife not something i would carry as a primary for a couple reasons a lot of it has to do with the blade which we will get to talking about right now um it is just a, it's a nice stubby quake and blade blade hq really lived up to the name of stubby when they made this knife because they made it smaller but they didn't necessarily make it a lot thinner. This feels very similar to the thickness of a regular size Quaken, which I like. I like because it still feel it still fills my hand. 
but um, the overall blade itself is still thick. They didn't necessarily slim the blade down. As a matter of fact, 0.12 is a very average, even it's right in that average size thickness. Uh, I would, most common one I see is probably 0.11, so maybe just slightly thicker than the average blade stock. But um, what's really weird with this knife, and it takes a little getting used to, is the actual point. Now this edge here is coming in at uh, 0.25, or 0.25, point, 25 thousandths behind the edge. I, I'm numbers and me, we, we go together like, like water and oil. But uh, 25 thousandths behind the edge. So, you know, nothing, nothing crazy, but it still cuts everything. Not, not, not the sliciest guy in the world, but it works really good for its purpose of being that backup blade. But what you really have to get used to is the tip here, the point, because I'm so used when you're look when you're talking about a knife like, like the Lieb, or the Mylea, you have you have tips that are that are much lower instead of all the way back here. These tips, I mean, we're talking they're you know either parallel with the pivot or even a little ahead of the pivot. Let me get these out of the way so I can focus better. Um, it just it, so. It, the tip is still there, it's still useful, you can still use it, but you have to get used to when you're cutting into something, you have to go in a little deeper, you have to push a little more because the tip is farther back. So that takes some getting used to. I I, I wouldn't say it's a drawback, it's just very different. It, 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 it it's, it's odd. But when it comes to, you know, cutting open a bag of candy or chips or whatever you want to, any, any small cutting tasks, I mean, this still works really good. Um, it, it's very comfortable to hold in this position right here, kind of have your index finger back on the blade for any type of, you know, trailing cuts or little detail work. Um, you just have to go in a little deeper to get to, to get the tip fully in. Yeah, we're, we're still talking about the knife. Keep your minds out of the gutter, people. But it... Once you get used to that, it's a very useful blade. I do like it. I, I I didn't. I wasn't sure about this when Blade H came out with this at the very beginning. I was kind of hesitant. One because it was a Boker. You guys know how I feel about Boker, but it, there was something about it that was just really attractive to me. I've always liked. I've always liked the Quaken design. I've always had other issues with quality reasons or material reasons or you know all sorts of things. But I thought you know what titanium carbon fiber s35 vn and it just looks good i gotta give this a try so i am glad i did i'm glad i did and the blade overall is very useful it, it takes a little getting used to with the tip being so much farther back and being so short i think that's what it is more is the combination of the tip being back and the blade being short that makes it uh just something you, you got to use for a little while to really become comfortable with it. But once you do, it works really well. And I tell you, one thing that doesn't take much to get used to is these handles and ergos. It They feel really good. They they don't, uh, there's no hot spots. Um, for a small knife, it's very solid. I have a very good, clean, and rather comfy three-finger grip on this guy. Um, I have no complaints on how it feels in my hand. Even the pocket clip back here, they did a really good job of of making it smooth to where I don't feel that pressing into my palm, even though it is right in the area of potential hot spot, hot spotty feeling, whatnot, um, due to the size of the handle. But it feels good. I don't really have any complaints. Um, the carbon fiber is also really nice on this guy. It's, uh, I would probably say definitely more of a shred, but if you look close at it, it, it does kind of have a little bit of a marbly effect in some places. More so on, I guess, on this side where you see, you know, depending on how the light hit, hits it and how you look at it with, depending, you know, how close you're looking at it too, it kind of comes off as being marbled. But if you look real close, it is somewhat shred, but it's still, it's a nice little blend. I prefer marble carbon fiber, but like I said, this, it's kind of a little optical illusion. It kind of looks marble, but I'd say overall it is, it is shred. Um, the transition line on the show side is flawless, like seamless. You don't feel it at all. I mean, we're talking like Riot quality here. Very surprising, but I feel zero, zero line here rubbing my finger over it. I really like that. That's a That was a nice attention paid to detail there. 
And uh, on the other side here, you feel a little more. This is definitely noticeable, but again, it's the clip side. You don't you don't put it quite as much attention to the clip side when you're holding it. You definitely have your thumb more on the show side. You're you're more likely to feel it on the show side than the clip side is what I'm is what I'm getting at, unless you're intentionally feeling for it. But regardless, it's not something you would like really notice with the naked eye. It still looks really good, really clean. Fit and finish on this guy is 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 very well very well i had i was a little uh critical of the boker quake and air on my review of that this is not that this th this has some very good fit and finish going on really really happy to see that um but overall it just has a very clean profile in general really like the way this knife looks closed it, it's it's just it's seamless there's nothing odd sticking out anywhere just looks really good, really clean, and uh, yeah, perfect pocket clip alert. This is nice. Love this pocket clip. Good tension, in and out of the pocket just fine. Plenty of ramp. Um, excellent, excellent pocket clip here. And you also have a very nice access to the liner lock with that little bit of extra room they made in there by kind of cutting that back a little and pushing that in uh works very well and as you can see there yeah that that drop you push that liner in and it drops shut and let's get to the action on this guy because it is surprisingly fantastic and i mean fantastic it's it, it's great it's it's really fun what you know what this reminds me of and i don't know why i think it's just because it's a small knife there's some small knives i don't enjoy deploying there's some that i really like this is one of them and it does remind me of this little guy right here this is the ferrum forge micro fortis and i just love flipping it i i, I like the way it, it gives a good little thwack it's crisp it's just fun it's a fun knife to fidget with. It's not the most useful knife I have. I, I keep this more out of just, um, you know, it, it, enjoyment. It, it, it kind of makes me happy. But I get that same feeling with this guy right here on a little bigger scale. Because when you push that flipper in, it just, it, the blade appears. I mean, it literally, the way this flipper tab is designed, I love this flipper tab. Because it's kind of that hybrid of like a push and a light switch. And you, it, it just... It just pops right out with such a good crisp thwack. And when you go to close it, it closes, it shakes shut really easy for as small of a blade as it is. Now, I know there's a lot of other knives that just sh fall right shut. Well, that's a bigger, heavier blade. You're not talking about a heavy blade here to do that with. That's That, that symbolizes a smooth knife. This is a smooth knife um, running on bearings, of course. Just, just a great knife. The action is fantastic. The more I had this, the more I carried it. I, I love it. I really do love it. I, I can't say that the the tip placement for the the in the short blade. That's still it, it's still not ideal. I'm not gonna say this is the perfect blade, but I still like it and it still works. Most importantly, it works. Overall thoughts on this guy for a fifth pocket knife. It's great. It really is great. It's a very nice little fifth pocket carry, and even more so an excellent gentleman's fifth pocket carry. You know, you could easily carry this in, in some slacks or dress pants. Um, it would hide pretty well. I, they may not have fifth pockets. I don't know. But nowadays, dress pants have all sorts of weird pockets, so maybe it'll fit in one of those. I don't know. But regardless, it is just a nice, clean, classy look. You can't deny that, that it has a bit of a gentleman's flair to it. Um, very nice quality overall. Really happy to see that with a Boker. Um, Blade HQ did a really, really good job of this. I would definitely recommend it. If you guys want one of these, like I said, you got to go to Blade HQ. They're not available anywhere else. I usually don't do this, but for this video, since you, there's nowhere else you can get it, I'm going to link it to Blade HQ. I'm not affiliated with Blade HQ in any way whatsoever. I tried to reach out to Blade HQ to see if maybe we could, you know, come up with some type of partnership or affiliation nothing crazy just a little something to you know help get my channel out there that i haven't even heard back from them so yeah they're kind of just giving me the cold shoulder but if you guys like this if you go pick one up drop my message on instagram tell them wayne sharp world sent you i would really appreciate that it would mean a lot to me um just thought i'd throw that out there but it is a nice knife and if it's the only place you can get it, it's the only place you can get it. So I'm gonna point in the right direction. Link for this knife is below in the video. Let me know what you guys think. Do you like small knives like this? Do you like the idea of, 
of regular size popular knives minimized down into a small knife. Let me know. I'm I'm thinking about coming up with a list of ni other knives that I would like to see miniaturized. I think that would be fun. That may be coming. I also have an updated fifth pocket, top 10 fifth pocket knives coming. You may or may not see this. I don't know, but it's a really good one. The Boker Quake, the Boker Quaken Stubby from Blade HQ. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Let me know what you think. And until the next one, I'm out.